Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My friends, today I welcome all of you here and all, all those watching at home as we honor our, our saint today, Saint Callistus, Pope and Martyr of our Church. Let us begin by acknowledging our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up Pope St. Callistus I to serve your church and attend devoutly to Christ's faithful departed, strengthen us, we pray, by his witness to the faith, so that rescued from the slavery of corruption, we may merit an incorruptible inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away for the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint, of rue, and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. 
These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you never do but you yourselves do not lift one finger to help them. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today, we remember uh, St. Callistus. He was a pope and a martyr of the church. He served less than five years as pope uh, before being martyred in the year 222. His only available story was written by St. Hippolytus, uh, his bitter rival, for, for the, he was his rival for the papacy. And reading between the lines of his life story, we discovered that Hippolytus, uh, he, he resented Callistus very much because Hippolytus, uh, he believed in strict adherence to laws and rules and regulations, while Callistus advocated for mercy. Callistus had a, a colorful background uh, as an escaped slave with two stints in forced labor camps. In those early decades of the church, many official uh, uh, people where they were trying to develop uh, what a pope should be. And the election of Callistus as pope clearly indicated a desire among the Christian leadership uh, that for, for love for repentant sinners to take precedence as Jesus had loved them, rather than embrace just simply a law uh, copied from the strict Pharisees. Hippolytus, though, was, was like a strict Pharisee. Uh, uh, his rivalry, jealousy, and factions uh, uh, were evident at the time. And in fact, he was the first to set up a rival papacy. Uh, in stark contrast, Callistus was much more in line with patience and kindness and generosity. I think I would prefer his style as Pope today. In fact, in the end, even Hippolytus received his mercy because he was also declared a saint due to the fact of being the most influential theologian of his time. Hopefully we here in our parish of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton uh, can emulate more the qualities of St. Callistus uh, and show the mercy of love of, of God to those who need it. Certainly uh, regulations are necessary and even important, but in the end it is mercy that wins hearts. Let us bring our needs before the Lord. Together with one voice, let us offer God our prayers and petitions for our church. May the Holy Spirit animate each of her members with new joy and zeal for Christ's mission. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in authority, may God give them the grace of humility. Let us pray to the Lord. For those burdened by poverty and hopelessness or sickness, may God give them peace and provide relief for their burdens. Let us pray to the Lord. For the community gathered here this morning, may God preserve us in harmony and humility through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially our mass intentions today, Joseph and Blanche de Luna, uh, may they find endless love, joy, and peace in God's embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our family members today, whatever their needs may be, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, hear our prayers, and in your grace, answer them according to your will. For we ask them through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful on this feast day of St. Callistus and with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Callistus, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, acclamation C, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, all the clergy, your entire people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, St. Callistus, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our prayer for protection in the time of this pandemic. O Mary, you always brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving Mother, you know what we need. We are confident you will provide for us as at Cana in Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son Jesus, the divine physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are tending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as to lead us through the cross to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Have a peaceful day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. St. Callistus, pray for us.